How can I avoid plagiarizing? Hello, lovely language learners. It's Mork Sensei. In my last video, check the link in the description box or up here somewhere, I talked about the reasons why plagiarism is wrong. In this video, we're going to review some examples of plagiarism and then go into how you can avoid plagiarism as an academic writer. Let's get started. In academic writing, there are many reasons why you'll need to get information from other sources. You don't know everything after all, <laughs> nobody does. You'll want to prove what you have learned to your teacher perhaps. You'll want to share an idea you didn't know about before you started your research. Maybe you'll want to make your argument stronger by giving support in the form of information from an expert in the field. You'll need to use other people's ideas. But how can you do this properly? As you hopefully already know, plagiarism is basically taking someone else's work and pretending it's your own. And there are many different ways this can happen. Let's look at a few broad examples. This is plagiarism. Keiko didn't reference where she found the information and the reader will think it is her own idea. This is plagiarism. While it's good that Paolo referenced some of the information, he needed to give credit to everything that wasn't his. Yes, this is plagiarism too. Carla only did half the work and pretended that she did the other half. This is plagiarism. Mohammed's teacher in this case is the creator of the materials. This is plagiarism. Regardless of the format Kartik's work is in, a paper, a presentation, a video, etc., he has to share where he found the information, even if he paraphrased or wrote in his own words. Note that the source of information can be in a variety of formats too, such as a book, a journal, magazine, newspaper, article, movie, YouTube video, recorded video, recorded phone call. All right, now you have a basic idea of what plagiarizing can look like. So how then can you avoid it? Well, you make sure you don't plagiarize by what's called citing and referencing. A citation is written either in text, immediately after you paraphrase or quote someone, or as a footnote, which is less common, and it's a note at the bottom of the page. A citation tells the readers where the information came from. A reference tells the reader more details about where you got the information from, so it's longer. When readers look at a reference, they can easily understand what kind of source it is and can easily find the source from, for themselves if they want to. A reference is usually included in a reference list or a bibliography at the end of a paper. 
The verbs cite and reference are often used to mean exactly the same thing, which is to give credit. If an idea is not yours, or if you get an idea from someone else, you should tell the reader where you got it from. You should reference or cite your source. However, you don't need to give a reference for everything you write in an assignment. You don't need to give a reference for common knowledge. Common knowledge is something that most people know. It can be difficult to know what common knowledge is, however. If you're not sure if something is common knowledge, then the best thing to do is to cite it and give a reference. For example, most people know that the Meiji period in Japan began in 1868. It's a, a fact. Therefore, if you're writing about the Meiji period, you don't need to give a reference for that information. However, most people don't know that the tax system changed during the Meiji period. People started paying taxes in money and not in rice. So you wrote about this change in your assignment, then you would need to give a citation and reference for that information. Now, there are many different documentation systems, systems for citations and references. What system you use depends on the academic field or what your teacher tells you to use. For example, there is the MLA style, Modern Language Association, used in literature, the APA style, American Psychology Association, used in fields such as education and psychology, the Chicago style is used by business, history, and the fine arts, and the CBE, Council of Biological Editors, is used in the life sciences. Even within academic fields, however, different types of documentation systems might be used because different scholarly journals may require a certain citation style. <sighs> it's not easy being a student or researcher. When you find information somewhere that you want to use in your paper, you can use it in three different ways. If the information is a famous saying, is something phrased very nicely, or is something that is difficult to say a different way, you might want to quote it. To quote something, you use the exact same words in the same order as the original, but you put quotation marks around it. You can quote a paragraph, a sentence, or perhaps only a phrase. Quotations should not be used too often in your paper, however. If you quote too much, your work will not demonstrate that you understand the content of what you're quoting. Instead, most of the time you should paraphrase. Paraphrasing is rewriting someone else's ideas in your own words. You can only do this well if you truly understand what the source is saying. Paraphrasing is also useful if you want to simplify a complicated idea. Rewriting will make it easier to understand. There are no strict rules, but when you paraphrase, you generally use about the same amount of writing as the original text, although you might need to make it longer. Paraphrasing can be difficult, even for native speakers. When you paraphrase in academic writing, just changing a few words here and there is not enough. You really have to rewrite the text so that it looks completely different. The meaning, however, must be the same. Be very careful not to change or add ideas or change the tone or nuance of the writing. Finally, you can summarize information. Summarizing means paraphrasing only the main ideas from a long original text. Remember, whether you quote, paraphrase, or summarize, you must give a citation and a reference. If you want some practice identifying plagiarism, I recommend you check out this website. I'll put a link to it in the description box below.
Once you're there, read the section Paraphrasing, Quoting, and Summarizing to review. Then try the exercises 1 to 8. Each exercise has the original work on the left and the student work on the right. There's a multiple choice question at the bottom of each exercise. One choice is not plagiarized and the other three choices are plagiarized, each with a different reason. Choose which you think is correct and then check your answer. The website will give you good explanations. Okay, lovely language learners, that is it for today. You won't know everything about citing and referencing after this video. The only way you'll become good at it is by practicing. Once you know what documentation system you need to use for your paper, you'll definitely need to access that style guide too. I'll put a link in the description box below to where you can find a few popular online style guides and also some tools for creating references automatically. All right, see you in the next video. Mork Sensei, signing out. Mwah! Yeah.